Okay, uh, Joe, we're going to get started here. I'm taking your watch down to its pieces. I really wonder if this has ever been serviced. It has some scratching here on the back of the uh, rotating weight, which is sometimes synonymous with someone getting in there and moving things around. But it's hard to know, of course. Okay. So this is a 6105B, which is a hacking uh, version of this movement. They actually did a bit of an upgrade from the model that went into the 6105 um, 8000s, which were the first iteration of this style of watch from Seiko. And this one is a sort of what I would call a chamfered edge uh, movement. It's got these beautiful, bright, polished lines along the edges of your bridges and other components. There's another version, which is a, just a straight, um, straight line style, straight edge, let's say. Okay. All right. So, let's go ahead and get your crown out, which we're going to work on rebuilding. There's your movement ring. Interesting. I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is cracked. So, we have an issue here with your spacer between your movement and your dial. This is a plastic ring that actually sometimes will crack. I think I do have one to replace it with, uh, but they're pretty fragile. They, they do crack over time. So that's something that we're going to have to replace. But not, not a major problem, for sure. All right, so there's your lovely dial. A very original, original watch here. So yeah, this this is cracked over on this side. We'll see that as soon as we take the dial and hands off. But this dial is very, very clean. I mean, it's, it's really nice. Oop, you can see it actually moving around here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get your hands off. We'll try and clean up as much as we can uh, without removing any of the patina that's there. Actually, give me one moment. Put another another layer of protection here just to be sure. I'm not touching anything anywhere. Now your hands look a little yeah they're okay. They're pretty flat. Yeah they're good. Just very close to the dial. Could be because of that dial ring. I'll put that right there. And we'll do another layer on top. Oop. Another layer on top. Get everybody lined up here. Okay. Get your hour handle. There we go. Okay. That reveals your dial. Now, what we're going to do together is we're going to go through and look at the year of manufacture of your dial. Now, sometimes a dial is about a month before the back of the case. Uh, so this is 1-3. So we might see actually a 72 dial. We'll see what it says. It might say no, or December of 72. It's not really clear. what we're going to see. We shall see. Ha ha, look at that. I was right. 2D, December 72, which is exactly what you'd expect for a watch that's all original like yours. There it is.
Great. All right, now here's the offending broken piece. Um, these are fairly common, uh, so we can just replace that. That's not a big deal. But that will come back to you. All right. Well, that's encouraging to see. Nice original watch. All of its original components. I don't think there was ever really a question. It's just nice to confirm. Okay. Come on. Oh my goodness. All right. Very nice. Okay. Let's go ahead and take your mainspring down to no power. I don't think there's much there, but we'll be sure before we take your pallet fork out. A little bit of power. Okay, so take your ratchet wheel off of your mainspring. And what that reveals is your upper mainspring arbor port bushing, which is one of the components we're going to upgrade to a, a jewel right here. Train bridge off. Should reveal all of your wheels and your hacking lever. And there we are. You can see that's lubricant that's come out of your mainspring arbor or a mainspring barrel and that um, tends to mix with bits and pieces of both steel and on the other side uh, brass and those can then become a grinding paste that will allow your mainspring to move around in ways that we don't like so yeah that's why we jewel things especially on these movements there's your lovely hacking lever put that into the wash All right, now we can take out your mainspring. Whoa, yeah, that's good stuff right there. Oh, a little bit of dirt, it's interesting. And uh, hair, also interesting. It's amazing what you find inside sometimes. So this is just dried lubricant. You can see this part right here has been sort of egged out um, by the process of years and years of, of use and wear. But you know what? We're going to remedy that by the use of a jewel, custom made, to go into that spot. Okay. And there's your center wheel. Now, we flip over and proceed with your calendar side.
plate. And there are all the rest of your components. I'm going to take off your calendar wheel here, your date wheel. And this is your jumper. Nice jump. Okay. Look at that. all the metal components. Got uh, everything metal on this movement, which is nice. This wheel here sometimes is plastic on the later models. Yours is all steel. Here's your date. Advancing finger on this wheel. It's actually sprung to the wheel itself, which is cool. All right. All right. So now we take off your plate here that holds your minute wheel. Comes off. Now we can get to your keyless works. No keys in this watch. Keyless. Spring. And now for the rest of your quick date mechanism here. pieces. Oh, you're going to be a little bit tight. There we go. There's your stem. There's your winding pinion. Setting pinion, really. Last two things. Your lower die shock. That's it. That's everything. Okay, so that's the teardown process. Now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to put a jewel uh, in this spot right here, and that will serve as the resting place for your lower mainspring arbor port or arbor. It goes right here. That's the port, and we're going to jewel it. So that's next. Okay, that I do uh, off camera. It's a little bit tedious, so I'll be back in a bit. Okay, Joe, well, uh, we're at a good point here. I've got all your um, parts out of the cleaner and um, here putting your case back together. So I wanted to take a few, through a few things um, before we do that. And uh, let's see. So. I have to say, this is this is really just such a fine looking uh, 6105. That insert is perfect. I I don't think. I mean, clearly this watch was worn. There was a lot of gunk and stuff uh, encased inside of here. This was somebody's watch, and they definitely wore it a lot. But they took really good care of it. Man, that insert is spectacular. Um, so good loom in your pip. Uh, everything looks fantastic. Um, they also must have uh, turned the bezel quite a bit. You, your, and I'll return it to you, it's in a little baggie here. Your ball for your click um, was absolutely worn down to a nub. I mean, one, one part of that is moisture, the other part is that somebody actually 
you know, certainly use the watch quite a bit. It's it's a tiny little speck of metal in here, and I don't, I could probably dig it out, but um, regardless, it is, uh, it's ready to have a new click ball, uh, and that will make it actually click when you turn the bezel. So we're gonna put one in. Um, also want to point out, so I have I have new new click balls here, so that will go in. It's not going to be so Seiko crimped the case a little bit to get the ball to stay captive. I can't do that, um, but your ball will be held underneath of your bezel and will be perfect, uh, perfectly fine. If you ever take the bezel off, which I don't recommend because it's so nice, um, the ball will come out if you're not careful. So just keep that in mind. Um, I rebuilt your crown, so that is perfect uh, and ready to go back together. Here's your old crown seal. As you can see, it is a piece of solid plastic, <laughs> which doesn't do a very good job of keeping out water. So now uh, that will come back, uh, but you have a new crown. I gotta put your stem back in your crown. I gotta put a little um, thread locker on here to make sure that it stays in place, but that will all go together. So now we're gonna go ahead and just rebuild your case and get that done. So I got your new crystal here, your type two from Spencer, which is a nice crystal to put on here. It's you know, a little bit elevated, it's not a type three. It's not quite as high domed as type, type one. And get this a little dust off here. So I've got your insert and your uh, original, still very, very soft original, uh, gasket here back in your watch so now we just press in to fit and there's no alignment to the insert because there's no chapter ring uh, kind of markings on it so we just want to make sure that everything is nice and flat pushed in that looks good okay I'm going to go ahead and put your uh, beautiful bezel on. I'll be right back. Okay, so now we've got your bezel installed, crystal bezel. Here's your spring. So your original spring is still in, intact. I put it back in after we cleaned it up. And now what I like to do for this step is put a little, little tiny bit of silicone on the tip here of the spring. That helps hold the ball in place while we're installing stuff so nothing slips away. We got a, got your new gasket on your um, sorry this, there you go. Get that pushed into place. Seated on the right spot. All right, so now we just lower your bezel in place, and there it is. Now we should get nice clicks. Perfect. Okay. That's exactly what you want. Really nice and tight. Um, you want this to be pretty stiff. Um, that's just the way it was designed and that's the way it is so there we go there's your case uh, now we have to go ahead and rebuild your put your stem back on your on your crown so there's a little thread lock here just enough to coat the threads Okay. There it is. Okay, so that's your case, your stem, all built out, ready to go back together. When we get your movement done, um, we'll be good to go. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, Joe. Well, we're here. We're ready to get back uh, to the movement. Got everything else put together. So, uh, just to point out a few things um, before we get started putting things back into the plate here. Here's your new lower mainspring arbor port jewel that's been machined out and a new jewel put in. 
And here is its partner, the upper mainspring arbor pore tool, right here. So those two together uh, locate the position of your uh, mainspring arbor, which we're going to put in in a moment. Uh, and now your watch is basically two extra jewels and really quite bulletproof in terms of its long-term uh, long life is essentially guaranteed, which is really nice. All right, so we got your center wheel. Let me take a very close look at this, make sure there's no dust or dirt. Of course, it's been through the cleaning machine, but sometimes there's little, little pieces of fuzz that can land on things and to issues it's not taken care of make sure everything is the way we want it and we put it in we don't have to spend time going back to make sure everything's trying to diagnose anything perfect when you go in. Hopefully it won't be a problem later on. Okay, that should be good shit. Make sure there's no nothing foreign on the edge there. It's amazing. One little piece of dust can bring the whole thing to a stop. So we try and avoid issues. Okay, I think we're good. So your mainspring is in here, and that's what we're looking for, nice freewheeling. Alright, make sure you put your hacking lever back in place before everything else goes in. That's the first piece. Alright, now for your wheels, you got your third wheel here, 
Again, we just go over every little piece and make sure that nothing is contaminated. Anything bad. Make sure all your pivots are clean and ready to go. Good. One more check. All right. Good to go. Let's get that one in place. And then I'd like to put your escape wheel in. Right, this one is particularly important to make sure there's no contamination of anything because it's such a fast moving wheel that it can really I mean of course everything has to be clean but this one this one will automatically show you that things are bad okay no mystery about that one and now for your fourth wheel which again is another fast moving wheel make sure there's no fuzz or pieces or anything Gonna go over it and guarantee it's clean. Better to check a hundred times than to have to take the movement back apart. And really the dust I'm looking for, the pieces, it's really microscopic stuff. I mean we're talking about the tiniest of contamination bits and pieces can lead to problems. Okay, this gets a little bit of lubrication before we start. it's clean on both sides everything's been through the cleaner but you know never hurts to check all right now we make sure that all your wheels are in their proper bushings and jewels your pivots are well seated and in the right spots So what I like to do is put a screw in, check function, put another screw in. I just had a 6105-8000 um, just recently that had a bad third wheel bushing, which um, you know, had some dimples and things in it that were in bad shape. and. You know, if you're not really, really careful and you tighten things down the wrong, at the wrong moment, it can lead to, lead to issues. So you just have to check and double check and triple check. Okay. 
It's a little redundant, but it saves you in the end from making a mistake. Okay, so now let's go with your click. Screw goes here. wheel Good. Doing all the right things. All right, now we lubricate all your pivots. Center wheel. And your escape wheel. Your third wheel. And what I like to do at this point is go ahead and flip the movement and do some things on the calendar side that need to get done so that when we drop the balance in, we know we're ready to go. So the things I have to do are put in your pre-oiled uh, die shock jewel for your, your balance. This is a bit of a close-up operation, so I'm going to have to get very close here. It's essentially putting a tiny spring into a tiny slot in three places. Three points along the spring need to go in. And it's a bit of a game of tiddlywinks with a demonic chip. There we go. Okay, good. Now we can lubricate your point where your cannon pinion sits on. Okay, so now we have to lubricate your other pivots on the bottom of the plate here. There's your escape wheel and your third wheel. And now we can put your cannon pinion on so that when we're ready to drop the balance Everything is exactly as it should be. Okay, so now we switch back and get ready for construction. Let some of that lubrication work its way around. Always a good thing to do. Check the running of the train. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, your wheels are turning nicely. That's very nice. All right. So now I have to lubricate your pallet fork. Okay. Got your pallet fork lubricated. So now we have to drop in your pallet fork bridge. There it goes. And I always start off by adding a little bit of power into your mainspring to make sure that the pallet fork itself actually moves. There we go. That was good. Before I put any sort of torque onto that screw. And then I check that it snaps back. Good. You want to make sure that's free, free running before you tighten anything down. Because again, Pivots break really easily if you're not careful. Okay, so that's tight. That's tight. Now we can add power to your mainspring. That's fully wound.
this ring here. Make sure that's nice and nice and ready. Another one of these things we have to check three different ways and be sure there's nothing on here that's gonna limit function or motion. But it looks good. All right, now's the moment. We're gonna see some motion. Hopefully we did our job right. We'll see. Let's see how it goes. Now, we don't have a jewel in the top of this, so we have to put it in, and I like it so I can actually see the pivot come through. Make sure we're in the right spot. And there we go. Okay, that's always good to see. We did something well. Now, you've got to put your screw in your jewel, and then we can check. See if we did really well or just kind of well. No, that's not true. We'll just make sure everything's running properly. But it looks good. Starting off good. under a little more magnification. Okay. All right, there we are. Let's put it on the time grapher. See what I see. Let's see how we did. All right, losing a little time. That's okay. We've got to make adjustments at this point. That's where we are. But overall, it's running. It's running. That's always good. Want to see the amplitude come up? Shows what it's going to do. We can adjust out feed error and rate, but we can't adjust the amplitude. It's, it is what it says it is. So we hope for the best with that. But we shall see. Okay. Let's get everything out of the way. Let's get this into a position we can start making adjustments. Close, like two. Let's bring up some of that amplitude here. And what I will do is go back and forth just a little bit. Sometimes the changing the rate also changes the feed error, which it has in this case as well. So. Sometimes 
too stiff and you push it and it jumps. Right. Bring it back. Okay. Now we can make finer adjustments. Too much? So let's let that run for a bit and see how it does. All right, I'm going to let that run in and we'll see how it does in a bit. All right, Joe, <clears throat> we have reached a point where we're going to start putting the calendar side back together. Your numbers after about eight hours, 10 hours uh, are really looking good. So I feel confident that we can proceed with this side and get things fully back together. So first of all, we gotta do some lubrication of your components here on your calendar side. sure that everything is properly lubricated and ready to go back together. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started.
Great. Let's go ahead and get our spring in place. Lubricant here. Make sure a lot of these points are well lubricated. They take a lot of work on the setting of the watch, so they definitely need some high quality grease. It stays in place. Good uh, corrector here, and then pulse. Put a little lubrication on that. Help change your date. And that is your movement reconstructed. There's your quick date and date changeover with the motion of your calendar. One more time. That's good. All right. Next stop, we're dialing hands, and I'm going to do that offline and be back okay Joe last couple pieces to put on uh, we've got your 
dial and hands back on and your movement back into your case. So now it's time to put your automatic winding components together and get those installed. That looks good. Put some lubricant here on your little bearings. Make sure those are in good shape before we finish off. I always like to put these last components on while the watch is in the case simply because working with the movement with the dial and the hands back on is of course a little bit dangerous if you make one false bump, one tiny slip and you have damage to components that of course should never be damaged. And none of them should be damaged, but those especially are uh, particularly susceptible. So I just put the movement back in the case. The case is a nice, safe place, holds the movement perfectly, protects the dial and hands, and you don't even have to worry. You can install this, and everything will be perfect. All right. weight and the last screw perfect all right and our movement retaining ring drops in your lubricated should be the end. Okay. And with that, we have completed the service of your beautiful really really pristine 1971 73 all right uh 6105 okay well let's uh let's do a little review uh of where we are um went ahead and did a couple things um Basically, the, the watch was in, in really fine shape when it arrived. It had been worn for a long time, and, and therefore there was a lot of dirt and crud and just, just from use, but no abuse at all. Look at this insert in this watch. It is phenomenal. This is a gorgeous example. I mean, I like them to show a little bit of their lifetime and their history. This one on the outside shows absolutely perfect, perfect case quality. I mean, in my mind, this is this is what a 6105 should look like. Um, really, uh, very straightforward change of your crown seal that was done. New seals all around, supplied by you. Um, we went with your original uh, crystal seal, like we'd said. Um, case back looks fantastic. Really nice to see these horseshoe case, uh, case back style 6105s. Um, I left your dial and your hands as they were. Uh, we cleaned up the haze on the hands a bit, um, but you know they they have history, and I would hate to remove perfectly good original loom. You know, it's not it's not of course bright china white anymore, but it is still just lovely in my opinion. I think it shows a perfect perfectly aged watch. 
your dial itself was phenomenal. It was just clean and a lovely matte finish. Um, you have a new click ball. Let's see if you can hear the clicks. So everything's clicking as it should, nice and tight on the on the bezel. Um, overall, your numbers are fantastic. Your watch is running in, in great shape. Um, I'm really happy with the outcome. I hope you are too, and um, I look forward to getting this back to you so you can enjoy it. All right, thank you, Joe.